Hello, welcome to the Tutors of Life podcast, where we research life so you don't have to. This is your host, Sean Tudor. And this is Sam. We're on the Tudor episode, and we're going to talk about uh, Tudor on kind of some money things. Some money. Some money and some time. Mm -hmm. Cool. What's up? We don't do that on these episodes. God damn it. All right. <clears throat> so, apparently this is for more helping than me just bullshitting yeah 100 percent. all right cool so what are we talking about today so we're talking about money we're kind of going to go off a little bit of the ten thousand dollar idea we were talking about the other day yeah yeah um do you want me to like reiterate that or what do you want what uh, do you want from me sean i don't really know all right so what we talked about last week what we're gonna go on is ten thousand dollars working Working overtime for an extra $10,000 is not going to typically change your life. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if, as, as long as you have uh, shelter, food. As long as your basic mass local hierarchy needs are taken care of, food, shelter, water, mm -hmm. an extra $10,000 is not going to drastically change your life to a point where it's necessarily worth trading that time for that money. Correct. In certain instances, I believe it can. On instances of sprinting for investing, goals, travel, things like that, mm -hmm. sacrificing. But for day-to-day -day living, be wary of how much time you're trading for money when you want to have a good life with your family. Yeah. And things like that. Yeah. And enjoy life because you only get one life. Right. Yeah, and it's a little different, I would say, for entrepreneurs because ten thousand dollars for your business is a big different thing than like personal money when you start out yeah yeah but i guess they were talking about your personal life not business life so right makes sense yeah yeah i just it's a very it's a neat idea that sean and i broke down and we were thinking about okay well if i instead of worked my 42 hours I average a week at my W-2 job, what would it look like if I worked 36 hours at my W-2 job? Because I still, that's what I need to work to keep my benefits. Right. So we kind of were breaking down, like, what would we do with that extra six, or what would I do with that extra six hours um, that I wasn't at work? Mm -hmm. uh, so that was, it was interesting for us because I think in the reality is I would be able to spend more time working on tutors of life or the property management stuff until that gets all set up and Brooke takes it over. Mm -hmm. And then, then we can spend more time together with Mimi outside doing stuff. It doesn't affect us, I would say, as much right now just because we can't really go do things because it's cold out and Mimi just likes to snuggle, mm -hmm. which I can work on my tablet and snuggle with Mimi. Um, but come summertime, I think it's something we're really going to consider because that extra six hours could be me going to visit my parents or, mm -hmm. uh, us going on a hike somewhere that's an hour away. Right. That extra six hours could allow us to do a lot more things together and not just focusing on our businesses so much. Yes. Yes, because mm -hmm. it opens up six hours, so we're not focusing on business. We're fo focusing on personal life. Mm -hmm. Really, it just frees up six hours because we got to do the business shit anyways. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, So I would probably work on business stuff right away after work, mm -hmm. and then we would have the rest of the night to go do whatever. Right. And during the summertime, it's nice because here it's – sunny out until like 9 p.m right 8 9 p.m so if i left my job at two worked on office stuff until four we have four until nine that's five hours right that's true all right cool i like it mm -hmm. yeah so i mean there's a couple ways to like break that money thing down you can either use that extra time to spend time with your family mm -hmm. or like do activities experiences things like that you can use that extra time for personal development or you can use that extra time for like business 
development, yeah. growing a side hustle business so that you can start getting, you can start having your money work for you and you not work for your money. Mm-hmm. So then you get passive income, right? Because that's like the big thing we, a big thing we think about is if we got more passive income, that's less time we have to spend actively making money. So then we don't really need to work over time and we can, like we could then like do things from home work from home if we want go do things stuff like that yeah uh i mean it there's other things that like are factoring into our decisions uh like we talked about getting a warehouse and once we get a warehouse then we can bring mimi with us and then our afternoons would be more for like activities that we want to do separately not together because we'd probably be working together more and if we had a warehouse Mm -hmm. yeah yeah us about the ten thousand dollars thing yeah i don't know okay cool <clears throat> that's all i got for the 10 grand it's really like not a so so depending on this is like a, a little breakdown of money right so to have your so in the u.s the the percentage or the amount of people who worry about food who worry about their like basic basic Maslow hierarchy needs food water shelter mm-hmm. is like uh it's like 34 million so 10 percent okay so around 10 percent of the u.s uh, it's like 10 to 14 percent whatever is worried about that mm-hmm. okay so that means 85 percent of us aren't worried about that so most likely if you're listening to this you, you, you're not worried about that. And the only reason you are worried about that is because you don't properly budget your money. Right. And you're spending your money frivolously, trying to drive nice shit when you don't make a lot of money, trying to live in a nicer place than you should live in because you don't make enough fucking money. Right? <clears throat> but as far as like your income wise, 85% of you shouldn't have an issue. Right. You just choose to because you're irresponsible. <clears throat> now, if you look at the world... 770 million have issues with that basic hierarchy, right? Mm -hmm. You know what that calculates out to be? About 10 fucking percent. 7 billion people. Mm -hmm. So roughly 10% once again, guys. Um, 10 to 14%. So that leaves 85% of the world. So quit acting like a bitch. That's what I'm getting at here, right? I love it. So when you look at that, most of us, that 10 grand... Or, you know, that that extra OT isn't life-changing unless you're utilizing it for specific goals. But if you're just utilizing it, this is the big point, Like a, we're, I guess, to make here, to clarify, is utilizing that extra OT for a standard of living is not going to bring you the happiness. Mm-hmm. Utilizing it for certain goal-based things could, like for a vacation, building a business, so you're not trading money for time you know getting rentals shit like that investments but just to have that for your standard of living you're not going it's not going to bring you that much more joy Mm -hmm. that's crazy yeah it's like the high high hydonic treadmill hydonic treadmill theory oh yeah you were telling me about this yeah so the hydonic treadmill theory is like this so like say Say you've made a hundred thousand dollars in a year. Mm-hmm. The the best year you ever made was a hundred grand. Now the next year you made eighty grand. Mm-hmm. You're not happy because your baseline happiness is making a hundred thousand. So you're not really happy unless you're making a hundred thousand dollars or more. Okay. So your baseline's a hundred grand. Now what if you make fifty thousand? Your like happiness level is super fucking low now. Like maybe a, a three out of ten, right? Mm-hmm. You, you low happiness level. And to get back to like you're trying, all you're trying to do is to get back to that level, and you will not be happy until you reach that level. And then to get above that level is where your true happiness starts to happen, right? You're seven out of ten, eight out of ten. But then that new standard is your new baseline. Mm-hmm. And so now, if you don't hit that the next year, you fall again on your happiness scale, and you're basing everything off of that. And that's for everything. That's money, life, fitness, relationships. Every you got like your hedonic treadmill baseline for all that shit. Mm-hmm. And as a like human, we set that baseline as you know, if we're not always improving, we are regressing. Mm-hmm. You know, was it Matt Vincent? 
Uh, the hydronic treadmill, that's more place, more dates. I've seen him talk about that a couple times. Okay, because we definitely heard it Derek. this weekend. Or this past weekend. We might have, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but that's cool. Yeah. So you got to adjust your baseline. Well, but I mean, no. I I mean, technically, yeah. You should want to adjust your baseline. You should want to adjust your baseline, but you also have to keep in mind that, like, you need to figure out who the fuck you are. Mm-hmm. And not base everything off of <coughs> that shit. Because you can, as a human, accept happiness making $100,000 a year or making $50,000 a year. It's just like rewiring your frequency, rewiring your brain to accept that. And I don't think a lot of people – the most most people aren't doing that amount of personal development to be able to accept that mm-hmm. and appreciate that. right? Yeah. So taking a pay cut – taking a pay cut – drastically because you're going to have like a better quality of living doing something you like to do more shit that's aligned with your values like so all other aspects of your life are getting better but the money if you've done enough personal development that's not going to matter to you because you're going to be able to like you accept and change your baseline for what like your your happiness is mm-hmm. okay and so it, it the the hydronic treadmill of the baseline is a, like a happiness baseline, and so you just have to adjust your baseline through personal development mm-hmm. to like where you want it mm-hmm. instead of because but most people aren't most people don't do that kind of work, so they just like it's baseline. It's like the uh, so uh, a good example I could give is like I know when I'm 220 pounds with a six pack, that was like my peak mm-hmm. physical male stature, yeah. and that shit's like fucking damn beautiful right but i'm still happy at like 200 with a six pack you know Mm -hmm. am i like i'm not 10 out of 10 happy or like 8 out of 10 happy but i'm like i've accepted that you know i can be at like a 7 out of 10 i'm still happy with it that's good so i don't know Hmm. right yeah maybe yeah neat it's all neat sure sure Mm -hmm. uh so what's the other thing you want to talk about? We'll get there in a second. So the next thing. I love how you just look at me like I should continue and then tell me no. The next thing is money, right? Income, median income. Median income across like first world countries. <clears throat> median income across first world countries for like basic emotional well-being is sixty to 75000 you have to make a year mm-hmm. individually. Mm-hmm. Okay. That knocks out the fucking majority so i'm sorry not so median let me let me let me say this right median income for the u.s per household is seventy thousand. okay seventy thousand is medium income for a household for a family right okay median income for an individual is thirty five thousand. okay emotional well-being is covered or like your your emotional well being is typically the studies they did factors it around sixty to seventy five thousand individually. So what the household makes currently mm-hmm. is the level an individual can make, and their emotional well being is like met. Okay, so most people's emotional well beings aren't even being met. Right. Okay. Second thing, when you look at um, what they a part of that study is like what level of income were they like satisfied with okay ninety five thousand based across the first world countries so ninety five thousand dollars a year so this study pretty much said dude like on average if you're not making sixty to seventy five thousand your emotional well-being is not like there Mm -hmm. and then if you're like to be like satisfied with life and career and all that shit it's ninety five thousand. okay that i would say is pretty accurate if you want to do a lot of shit if you want to like drive a nicer car you want to live in a nicer house you want to like go on more vacations right yeah that's not very far off no now on the other side depending on what your goals are your hobbies are and shit like that You have to figure out your own emotional well-being. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to maybe accept that you don't get 
a fucking 1990s or newer ranch style fucking four bed two bath house uh, maybe you're living in a 1940s fucking three bed one and a half bath mm -hmm. one bath you know yeah because you are not on fucking par with what everyone else makes and that's just part of life that's part of it so maybe instead you need to take that extra time you're trying to work ot to make 50 grand a year personal development and ways to make more money mm -hmm. passively yeah not just trading time for money yeah <clears throat> or how to increase your skill set so when you're trading your time for money for 35 40 hours a week you're making 40 bucks an hour instead of 20 20 yeah right shit so yeah i think dude a lot of like like a foreman for a construction company mm -hmm. in the area they're making around like 35 to 40 dollars an hour okay and so if you're going as a foreman working 40 hours a week you got a pretty fucking decent gig you got a pretty good life like that's not a bad thing okay flip side of that you're a social worker making 35 40 thousand dollars a year probably working similar amounts of time the foreman probably has to do more sprints they gotta do more sprints or maybe they're working to get a project done maybe they're working 45 50 hours a week you know that's going to happen in that field but that shit's usually sprints mm -hmm. it ebbs and flows yeah. then you'll get laid off for a por portion of the winter and that's your time to like level out your your week like your hourly you work during the weeks right yeah. so looking at that dude it's like well maybe maybe you shouldn't get that social work degree Maybe you shouldn't be a social worker. Maybe you got to be a fucking plumber, dude. True. You know. An electrician. An ele dude, electricians, plumbers, foremans in any of those fields. Mm -hmm. Fucking HVAC. Dude, I calculated out one time what the fucking HVAC guys made off of me. Dude, it's quite Jesus a bit. Christ. They yeah. made like $500 an hour. I was like, you guys are insane or sorry 250 because there's two guys working 250 250 dollars an hour per guy working i was like that's the coolest shit i've ever that's seen. that's incredible coolest shit i've ever seen and granted it's for a bigger business but -da -da, la -da -da -da, whatever but if you had your own small business doing that and you're making 150 bucks a piece yeah i'm gonna choose you guys because you're cheaper I like working with small business more than I like big business mm -hmm. and you're getting that fucking they're still getting a pretty good amount of cheddar Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big time. But, like, so it's about, like, that skill set and about, like, so, so anyways, that's kind of to wrap up the, the whole, like, money portion about, like, what you're making and then, like, what you could kind of do with that extra time to make some changes. Yeah, and that's something they don't um, teach in, like, high school anymore or, like, at all. They don't teach that shit. Yeah, because we were all, especially, like, minor John's generation and probably so on. We were all told, like, you had to go to college. If you wanted to get a decent job, you had to go to college. And now people are getting undergraduate under, undergraduate degrees, being thousands of dollars in debt, mm -hmm. and then they're starting wages, $15 an hour. Mm -hmm. It's because you and every other person down the street have the exact same degree, so... I can tell you what is hiring right now. All these uh, blue-collar worker all jobs. Trades. All the trades. Yeah. Which you can go to college in a two-year degree. Or you don't even need to go to college and just get an apprenticeship. That's very true. You can yeah. do that too. Um, so that's something to like consider. If, if you have kids or you have nieces and nephews or the kid down the street, like make sure to tell them, like, hey, look and see what kind of jobs you can get after college. Um, right. I did that with microbiology. My issue was it took me seven years to get my degree because uh, when I looked up jobs when I was a freshman in college, it was super easy for me to get a job um, or it would have been super easy for me to get a job and it was going to pay well. But by the time I graduated, completely changed. So everybody and their brothers got a degree mm -hmm. in that shit. And then they wanted a lab certificate, which four-year degrees don't give you. Right so dumb love that shit mm -hmm. i mean so while you're getting your degree also to keep checking and making sure that those jobs are there and then what the pay is gonna is gonna be worth it for you for how much money you're spending on your degree yeah 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 i mean also keep in mind so many people are so many people are, are gonna have the same degrees as you mm -hmm. and so what separates you from them um is it worth getting the degree or like 
what other things do you have to do to separate yourself from them? Mm. And there's so many places still that like, um, like if you just start somewhere and then just like work your way up, a lot of places will give you that experience without the degree. A hundred percent. So that's also, I mean, a good way to get around the whole system of getting a degree. Yeah, absolutely. It is Hmm. cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is the um, thing Sam shared on their story on Friday. Saturday? Saturday. Saturday. Is, uh, <clears throat> would $10 million suffice? Like, would you be happy if I gave you $10 million today? Sure. Like, $10 million, you'd be set, right? For yeah. For the rest of your life, you take $10 million? Yeah. All right, cool. I'll give you $10 million today, but you don't get to wake up tomorrow. No. No one's taking the ten million dollars because one day, one singular one day is more important than ten million dollars. Yeah. You would rather wake up tomorrow than get ten million dollars. Yep. And so if you'd rather wake up tomorrow than receive ten million dollars, then why are you working your life away and not enjoying your life? Yeah. I mean, what if you enjoy working? I think that's a that's a big difference that most people don't. My my favorite hobby is working. Mm-hmm. So I work. That's what I do. Like that's my that's my favorite hobby. Um but you still also make time to go to the gym, do jujitsu, hang out with me, me, hang out with me. Right. And so working probably wouldn't be my favorite thing if I didn't have other outlets. If all I ever did was work, and I've tried that where all I ever do, like, just work, 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 and, like, just lift a few ta- a couple times, a few times a week to, like, maintain, it ends up getting to a point where I'm like, uh, this working shit actually sucks ass. Yeah. And so it's like the – if you enjoy working, that's good, but, I mean, you, you got to have those other outlets to keep enjoying work mm-hmm. because I can promise you you're not going to be happy just being a workaholic forever if you don't have other things that you do. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, really appreciate what you have each day, every day, and think about what you're doing every day because you may not have a tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, things have been happening in mine and Sean's life, and it's been really making us think about how we do want to spend every day, how we want to like make sure we see our family more often. Um because one day those people or us won't be there. So right. we're just, it, it's it's been an interesting time for us because we've definitely been reevaluating a lot of our priorities and our needs and our wants in life. Mm-hmm. Um, and they could, yeah, money-wise or just how we spend a day. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool, cool. 2023 is the year of uh, priorities. Is it? Mm-hmm. For us or just for people? For us. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Figuring out what's truly, truly worth it for us. That's what I got. Cool. All right. Thanks, dudes. See ya. Catch you on the next one.